Check, check. Okay, good. Uh, hello, everybody. We are super honored to be here at the Avalanche Summit. Shout out Avalanche team who's been super supportive of us. We are really excited about what we've put together with Zero One. Uh, I am going to start with kind of a high level overview of culture, why it's important, and then I'm going to pass it off to Ludovic, who's going to talk about the product that we've built. Uh, this is what we're talking about. Got it. Okay. What is culture? Culture is the entirety of the set of symbols, ideologies, everything that makes us who we are, what we identify with, really what it is is that the stories we tell each other. Uh, NFTs are these moments in time that relate to identity. We are capturing it, we are aggregating, we are becoming more ourselves with this. Uh, but outside of the digital, what does culture look like in the real world? Well, it looks like this. You might recognize some things here. Uh, monumental, monumental testaments to our accomplishments as humans. Uh, it looks like this. Incredible artwork, thought-provoking. A lot of the times while these projects, while these artworks were happening, people thought that these creators were crazy. Um, and only in time do we learn to kind of like grow and appreciate. So why is culture important? Well, culture is, again, it's what makes life fun. It's what brings us back to who we are. It's how we connect with other people. It's what we relate around. But sadly, we are looking uh, down the barrel of a global monoculture where increasingly everything looks the same. The same tools that are connecting us are actually the same tools that are kind of copy pasting copy-pasting everything in the world. What is causing everything to look the same? Well, it's the nature of capital. It is really uh, the sterilization, a Silicon Valley aesthetic that is being spread. It happens with Airbnb. It's happening in architecture, interior design, coffee shops. There is this idea of airspace, where wherever you go in the world, technology is trying to make you feel at home. But it's becoming so increasingly the same that really nothing feels like home. Everything just looks and feels the same. So here are some quotes. Here are some quotes that I stole from the internet. Really, this is just highlighting uh, what we already know, what we feel, um, that, that it's just these giant cityscapes are becoming interchangeable. It doesn't matter whether you're in South Korea, whether you're in Argentina, there is still that same familiarity. And for me, that is depressing. It has a lost in translation feel uh, where it's almost like nothing is real, nothing is authentic. So what do we do? Uh, you know, we, we are seeing this proliferation of minimalist design, everything being driven towards the middle. There's a lack of color. Everything is kind of presented in monotones. And this is what social media is really doing to our lives. We have an expectation that things should be one way, and when they're not, it's discomforting, it's uncomfortable. But the fact of the matter is, is that art should be uncomfortable. Uh, it should challenge us, it should provoke us, it should push us forward, it should allow us to be more imaginative of the possibilities. This is just, I love this slide, this is really just saying, uh, Look where we were, look where we've <laughs> been, look at all of these logos that have just kind of devolved into Helvetica fonts, the most easily readable, most easily accessible. Our lives, uh, most of us as kids, used to be filled with color, it used to be filled with wonder. You could see through into the technology. Uh, now it's just black screens, right? So it's really kind of what we invent on our screen that is providing it to us. There is no consideration for the product itself. And this is, uh, you know, this is global capitalism at work. Uh, you can see all of the logos look the same. I like this slide, I hope you do too. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Why are styles converging together? It's these factors. It's readability, it's mass appeal, and it's technology. It's the expectation that everything should be the same. It is this idea of global monoculture. English is now spoken by 2.2 billion people. The West is really aggressively spreading this. Uh, because it's a product and everything is being designed to be a product that's meant to be sold. Uh, but we believe that for every reaction there is an equal and opposite reaction and crypto art has kind of been the point where we s begin to see people fed up 
we begin to see a uh, reaction to this. And what is exciting to me about crypto art in a world where, is, where there is this convergence of creativity, where there is a narrowing of beauty, and when there is an intensifying of competition, is that suddenly individuals are free to be themselves. They are taking sovereignty with these crypto tools. Uh, and crypto networks are wonderful facilitators of these works and alternative forms of value aggregation. Uh, so, you know, in considering what we've built, right, we're, we're looking at the internet, how it's spread, crypto adoption down there. In the US, 10%, globally, 3 4%, uh, way back there, right? In crypto, we've onboarded all the technologists. We've onboarded uh, a lot of venture capital. So who is next? Who are going to be the early adopters? Who is going to be this early majority? In my mind, it's the creative individuals of this world. It's the digital artists. It's the people that are willing to take risks and have adjusted risks into their lives. When we begin to pair these left brain thinkers with these right brain thinkers, I really think an incredible magic is going to happen. So we really need to encourage uh, and support and bring culture into our blockchains. They will help build better UI, they will help build better UX, and all of this thinking has really just kind of gone into the product that we built, and that product is zero one. Next, okay. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Ludovica Rossi, and uh, I direct Gallery of Crypto Art which is a um, digital art consulting and a product development company. And today I'm extremely happy to present a very significant project that uh, we're building on Avalanche, that it's called Zero One. They've been building with uh, all my team members are here, Colburn, Shivani, and Phil, and uh, other incredible teams that are worldwide based, really, and all the Avalanche team that is here, and thank you so much. But um, so zero one, what I really think, just to give you a um, small uh, idea, is that it's not only going to change the digital creative industry, but I really think that it's going to change the way how we consume digital content every day. And before reaching this point, I would like to guide you along to interconnected paths. That is a bit also the analysis that we've done before working on zero one. So I would like to start with this sentence, uh, who is a sentence written by Luciano Fontana, who is an artist uh, that is the initiator of um, our movement from the 1950s called Spatialism, that was based in between Buenos Aires and Italy. And uh, he writes in 1946, tomorrow art may end. In fact, uh, I believe that the art of painting will end because in the new dimensions in which humans will live in the spatial dimensions, Art, as it's conceived today, will seem by necessity too primitive, too inadequate, too ridiculous. And the reason why I'm starting with this quotation is to encourage all of us to step back and take a moment and realize what are the events, what are the thoughts, who are the human beings that somehow took us and made us reach this point today? And somehow also, who are these people that made us arrive today of the thought that there is behind zero one? Because uh, it's, uh, I'm fascinated because it may seem banal today because, of course, we have the metaverse, we have digital art, we have so many new technologies, but this was written in 1946, and so this really makes understand how pioneering and forerunners are artists, how the way how he was describing things in 1946 is exactly the current state of affairs. And so artists must have this visibility, must, artists must be listened. And if we think about it, uh, um, this was, is, a, is a sentence that was taken from this manifesto that was written in Buenos Aires that if you didn't read, I would really advise you to take a moment or 14 pages to read it because they really anticipated human needs, necessities, artists' necessities, and somehow also they are, I think, a reference point of this shift. And this did not only happen with specialists, did not only happen with Fontana, this happened with Caravaggio. He probably was only understood at the beginning of the 1900 with the advent of photography. So maybe he's the first photographer ever and we never knew. And this happened with Piero della Francesca, who's an Italian artist from the 1400, 
who actually developed and included in his art uh, three-dimensionality in a very bi-dimensional period, if we can call it this way. And this happened with Impressionists, who gave up uh, to the sacral idea of preparatory works in a period in which tradition was super important, anticipating the dynamism that would have characterized the um, 1900. And again, it happened with opera, who showed us the rich life that is hidden behind the simplest existence before we were actually forced to do so in 2020. So all these uh, examples uh, make us understand that really like artists are for learners and need to be listened. And so the more the engine of culture moves, the more we're able to perceive the, rev the revolution, the future changes. And with zero one, this is, I think, even taken from Colburn's presentation, this is really the common denominator that there is at the base of multiple, multiple brains that have been working in zero one. Listening to artists, make the artists, the individuals, because I don't even want to categorize who is an artist, who is not an artist. Creative people, individuals at the front. Okay, I'm going to also do a quick analysis in the um, how um, technology has shifted consumption for human beings lately. And uh, I think that millennials and Gen Z, or digital native generation that grew up with smartphones, I grew up with social media since I was 10 years old. I logged in my Facebook. And, uh, and so the way how this uh, evolved over time is that we were able to use social media as a tool to at some point also make profits. So almost creating work from our passions by leveraging the incre incredible uh, possibility of information distribution. And so I th at the same time, uh, I think that like right now, if we think about it, there is this shift in technology in which Gen Z are actually, will actually start leading the way of the internet and the culture and the, and the uh, technology in their ways to go. And I think this because I'm, uh, um, I'm, I take my personal case. It's been uh, two years I'm working in this space, uh, and I come from Web2, and I'm also 22 years old, so it's been two years that I'm bridging in between generations, and not only generation, but also in between industries. And so the more I'm uh, learning every day, the more I understand that the only sustainable way that Gen Z sees the future in their psychology is through peer-to-peer -peer interactions is through decentralization, and most importantly, is through proof of, of, proof of um, digital ownership and protecting their digital identity. Because over time, we're, keep, we're, we're keeping to create digital content. And so I think that it's really from this analysis of the art, of this analysis above, uh, on artists, and this analysis on this shift in mentality towards technology that emerges zero one that is uh, an innovative platform that we're building on Avalanche that allows to do three very simple things. That is the create, collect, and connect. Create is to, we call them internally the three C's, and we always have fun with this, with this idea. And we, these three C's for us uh, ensure to do three main action, which is to discover, because you're creating, that is to collect, because we're preserving, and is to connect, because you're interconnecting, you're connecting with people. And we're doing all this freely, which means that we're shifting the mindset also from the economic standpoint. We're leaving the market value, that is the dollar value, and we're moving towards the social value. That is where distribution and social recognition are actually the two key things that we think will ensure the long-term success of artists and individuals. So, what was also a thought behind this is that we are somehow, as we said before, anticipating what are going to be the new generation's needs that Web2 um, social media are not able to address, or not able to meet. And if we look at Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter, these are social media and as well as discoverability platforms. And they are unfortunately not taking, they were super innovative at the time, but now they're aged, but they're very easy to use. While on the other side, we have, for example, Objects and OpenSea that are two Web3 marketplaces that are uh, like, uh, up to date with technology, but they also see the usability of technology only towards financial and economical means. While with Zero One, what do we want to do? We want to implement the technology in our everyday lives. So how can we use this is by protecting our digital content in a very easy way to use. 
And this is why we are presenting today a very minimal and very, um, very easy to use user experience, a user interface. And this is to make the, te the technology also accessible to people that may have boundaries in understanding um, coding, in understanding tech stuff. And in fact, to somehow uh, welcome also people that come from Web2 or people that may just be interested in creating and not in learning technology, we're implementing a very familiar login system in which you can create actually a Web3 wallet by only logging in with your Google uh, email and your Facebook email. So as I said before, now I'm going, to do, I'm going to do a very technical demo of the product. The first part is creating. So as everything that will be created in 01 will be minted in the blockchain in uh, three very easy steps. So this is the mobile version, as you can see. The first part, uh, there is a contract creation. There are two types of contracts. Uh, there is the standard one that are, is to um, allow users that do not understand so much or maybe are not interested in learning more about contracts to be able to mint. And then a costume in which we allow artists to choose their percentage of royalties. And here is where Avalanche is actually incredible because the possibility of distribution in Avalanche is like 10x of Ethereum. And then there is step two, that is mint recreation. You can upload uh, many different kinds of media. You can upload a, a title, a description. You can choose your number of edition, and you can reserve also for yourself some personal editions. And then you can insert any tags, and then it's mint. And all this is for free. In, um, in the collect part, we also did uh, an interesting analysis because somehow we wanted to remove the the constructive and underperforming uh, characteristic and features that are in social media, for example, liking and collecting, because there is a great difference in between putting a simple like on a picture or actually actively collecting someone and be part of someone's journey, fostering a really constructive support. And this is why we're allowing people to collect freely someone's work. That doesn't have to be a one-on-one, -on -one, doesn't have to be a finished work. It can be anything a person can share. And here is a very easy way in just two steps. And then there is the, the, my favorite part that is the, the collect part, the connection part, because I call this, this platform sometimes a platform of exchanges because it's really what there is behind. And so we have included, we did a careful decision into the discoverability and visibility tools. It was a really back and forth with our dev team that are German based, incredible team and our design team that is Argentina based. And somehow we warn the fact that artists has to be listened, has to be seen. They have to be the test maker. They have to be the one that have visibility. And so for this reason, we implemented four different um, visualization mode for the desktop version and two different visualization mode for the mobile version. This is a small grid, so it's more useful for discoverability when you want to see more artworks at the same time. Then there is the medium grid. Then there is, we call this the relax mode, when it's one um, content, one artwork, one piece per time. And then there is my favorite mode, that is the geo mode. And this is, uh, was a careful decision that we made to implement the value of integration. Because it, I think it's one thing to look at someone's location on their bio, and one thing is to actually visually see. This is a heat map also. It becomes more red when people are creating the most. And it's one thing to see where people are actually creating, where there is a scene, where there is a contemporary culture that is going on, from which part of the world. And most times it's interesting because it may be super far away physically wise, but then if we actually see the artwork, it's super close in terms of expression. And this is uh, the, um, the mobile feed. This is the desktop profile. It's customizable uh, as, our, as uh, every user prefer. There is created co and collected because we incentivize people to both create and collect. We don't want anyone to only create or only to collect. This is the mobile profile, just to give you a quick demo of it. And uh, how we're doing this is through Avalanche, because as you know, Avalanche is a very high true output, is able to um, is able to process large amount of data without giving up to three important things, which is high security, high performance, and low transaction fees. So coming to an end, 
zero one is really a shift in mindset and we're just part of a process in which we have to understand i think that art and culture or accelerator of technology and technology is an accelerator of art and culture and i think avalanche and we understood this and we have the tools to make this vision comes alive and so we are launching our beta soon and if you would like to join our beta this is the link you can just insert your email and uh, you can join us thank you